just want to do a quick session on back testing and just how I personally back test because there's a, everyone back tests a little bit different I think and I I believe there's um, there's lots of different types of back testing and one thing you have to that's really important in your back test is you have to be really honest with yourself because keep in mind back testing takes a long time so you're gonna be sitting here for hours upon hours upon hours filling in numbers so why not do it right and here's the other thing keep in mind your trading account depends on the way that you back test because if you just if you start looking at charts and you and you you stop getting objective and you say well I wouldn't have taken that one because well the question is would you have taken it live that's all that matters so let me first just talk about um, the system since I've been trading it live okay so I had a couple of questions about that today I started trading it live December 7th don't ask me why it's December 7th but it was December 7th okay I've had as of today 905 trades so I have a pretty good sample size at this point these are not back tested trades just want to reiterate this is not back test total profit 49,925 that is B4 commission okay profit factor 2.36 I'm hitting around just over 65 percent okay so the other things that are really important on this spreadsheet are the MFE MFE stands for maximum favorable excursion and then MAE MAE stands for maximum adverse excursion now why is that important let's go back to this last trade that I took and let's just let me let's let's walk through the numbers so here's my MFE 43.32 and my MAE was 43.69 where does that come from this is Vieco's okay I got short 4361 here's where I got short 4361 is where I got filled my adverse excursion is how far did the trade go against me before I hit my target so that's gonna be 4369 now if I took a full stop my adverse excursion is that full 15 ticks okay and then the way I do my MFE my maximum favorable excursion is I follow the trade until I would have been stopped out in this trade I had my stop above 4350 by five ticks I was stopped out here on my trailer so my MFE is down here at 4332 look at the spreadsheet 4332 and 4369 now what do those numbers even mean well when you're building a system it helps you determine your targets why do you think I use a 15 tick stop and a 15 tick target let's come over to this column my MFE so on average each trade will go 25 ticks in my favor okay ignore these numbers I was doing some math but if I change that formula and I go to median seventeen. Therefore, fifteen ticks is reasonable. Okay? Now, what can this help me with? Well, it can help me if, if I want to do it, if I want to have a trailer. I could say well on average I get 25 so maybe I want my trailer profit to be at 25 that's an extra 10 ticks right so I'd be risking 30 on two contracts to try to make 40 anyway that's what you can do with your with your M F E now your M A E this tells me how much it goes against me and on average it's 8 ticks now I've played with all kinds of different stops. I've I've played with smaller stops in 15, and I'm just going to be honest. I've done the math here, gang. 
I've had plenty of students in here try to break this system and they didn't break the system. Okay, they, they finally just came around and said, I'm just going to trade the rules. I've done a ton of analysis on this. I literally, I mean, there's probably more I could do. The only other thing that I haven't really done well tracking is the time and trade. It's, and it's only because I can't figure out the formula. I can't figure out how to get Excel to recognize this is time and subtract the difference. So if anybody can help me with that, I am all ears. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Let's talk about back testing. All right, Maria, I want to talk to you. Okay, let me get rid of all these zones because these zones are gone. They're not valid. Okay, so let's. Let's pretend what let's pretend I want to just let me just pick a random day, okay? So let's just here here's a random day. I just totally just took my cursor and I pulled it back and just picked a random day here. So here's what here's a couple things you need to do in Ninja Trader. So I, what I'll do is I put my high time frame chart on my left, I put my trading time frame chart on the right. And then I need to make sure my global crosshair stuff is set to is on. So this cursor needs to be a global crosshair. This one has to be a global crosshair too. Okay, and then what I do is I, I set my high time frame up to where it tracks with my trading time frame. And by to do that, you go to this little box, which is properties. And you see where it says global crosshair time axis scrolling. Set it to true. Now look what happens when I come over here. My high time frame automatically moves to where my trading time frame is. So I set it to where everything's at the hard right edge. Hard right edge. Why? Because if I know what's going to happen next, I'm it's going to change the way I backtest. I'm going to have a tendency of saying, well, I wouldn't have taken that trade because I already know it's a losing trade. So my results on my spreadsheet are going to be swayed. What good does that do me? None, because I'm, I want to trade this with real money. Keep in mind, the way you back test is going to be the way that you trade. Practice how you want to play. I literally will go bar by bar and say, do I have a trade set up? If yes, then I come to my spreadsheet. So let's just pretend that this is a trade set up. Okay, let's pretend this bar right here it's a bearish engulf. Let's pretend I want this trade. So I already know that I want to be in this trade. I go in here, and so I, I always give myself a tick of slippage in and a tick of slippage out. So I, I, my best entry here would be 45.94. So let's go to the spreadsheet. I come in here. I do, what was the time on that? I don't know. Let's just say the time was 4.30. Type in the instrument, do two contracts. I don't even remember what the entry was. Wonderful. 45.94. That's going to be in the short column. 45.94. Okay. What's the trade type? We'll say this is a trade type one. So that's going to go in that column. Now let's see what happens. Okay, looking good. My target would have been 70, uh, I'm sorry, it would have been 79, so I got my first target. So that goes here, 45, 79. Okay. And then my stop now, right now would be above this dot at the dot here is 4508, so five ticks above. I'm stopped out, so 4603. My MFE is down here at 4576. 
my adverse excursion is 46.04. Mike, I, ha I have used the on-demand feature in Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim's a data hog. And then my exit time on that trade was 4.46. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, so now at this point, I look at the chart and I say, where's my next entry? I look at my high time frame. <sighs> Sorry, this axis scrolling can be a huge pain. Well, you know what? Actually, look at my high time frame. I'm not supposed to be short anyway. So let's just... Um, you know, let's scroll forward a little bit and then... Okay, so right here we right here now we have an offer zone on the high time frame. So now let's look for the first thing we're gonna look for right now is let's see, eighty four. Ah, it's not fifty tick unstructured. Okay. So my bid zone, I'm sorry, offer zone on the is over here on the trading time frame. So I would have I would have been looking for a move into my zone and then this one is happens to be above mid band region so I wouldn't have taken that trade now I'm looking for one of my deep retrace patterns so I just I just scroll forward until I get the pattern I don't have a pattern there so I wouldn't have taken that trade so I'm just I'm, I just scroll through until I have a pattern to trade okay so now Let's see if we get a pattern in here. Okay, so here is a trend continuation. All right, so my entry, 45.14. So my best fill is 45.13. Let's get the spreadsheet. Time looks like 7 o'clock. Type 1. Okay, let's go. Let's see where we get, what happens. So, um, in, at thirteen, so my target is ninety eight. Target hit. I at this point could already fill in my M A E, my adverse excursion. I got in here, so my adverse excursion is all the way up here at 45.22. Let's go ahead and fill that in. And then I just, I'd just i be trailing above here for the, no, actually I don't have a two bar rule there. I'd be trailing on the dots. So right now my trailer would be 01. I'd stop at 44.95. Okay, that, that one made 33 ticks. My MFE is 44.76. Any questions on how I do this? Yes, Frank, I manually put them in on the high time frame. I do have to manually put the zones in. Can I explain what all the levels are? The shaded zones, and the actual moving averages and all. Um, can it, yeah. I am recording this. So let me let me get out of uh, the global crosshair stuff right now. It's really annoying to have on there if you're not back testing. By the way, let me get rid of all these white lines. Okay. What the heck? Okay, so here's here's a rundown. 
I sent out an email yesterday that had a pretty nice little rundown of the system too. So you might check that. I look for my offer zones and my bid zones. Right now, I I have... Hold on one second. Let me... Don't save that. So right now, I just have an offer zone. Yeah, I know, Maria. Right now, I just have an offer zone, so I'd be looking for shorts only, right? that is I thought that was that is so this actually is a bid zone so I have stacked zones again second time today so the way I not so because I have stacked zones I'll be looking for shorts only inside of the offer zone and longs only inside the bid zone and so I'd be looking for a money pattern or a weaker low pattern up here it did have, so if I go to my trading time frame, I'm not going to take this trade because right now I'm just trying to teach mode, but this is a money pattern, okay? And confirmation has already occurred here at 90. So you'd be short here at 90, here. I'm doing it here in sim because I don't want to pay attention to it, okay? But this is a valid trade. I'm sure that I have students right now who are in this trade. Can anyone confirm? Yes, that was fast. Yep, got a few of them. Okay. See, they are, they were already in it before I even brought it up. And that's one thing that I love about what we've built here. People can actually learn this stuff on their own and do it without me. And so basically, this is what I do, right? I, I have a zone. It tells me the direction. Then I look at my trading time frame. And I have three different trades. Let's look at that. Let's I'll, I'll put them right here. So I have the trend continuation. That is trade one. Trade two. Trend continuation. Deep retrace. And that has a couple variations. When I, when, I, well, when I say variations, it has a couple different patterns. We've got pattern A is a money pattern. And guys, these are all specific to what I do. You're not going to find these if you Google them, I promise you. And then you have a WHL pattern. Okay, and then trade type 3 is the momentum. Those are the trades that I look for. This trade right here is a money pattern. It's a trend continuation, deep retrace trade. And I know it's against a massive move up down here. Look, we had, this looks like we are going to get a double bottom down here. I mean, that's a massive move that we had. I'd still take the trade, okay? So that's that's a kind of a rundown on the system. For on this on the, the right chart here, you have a stochastic. The settings I use on stochastic, they're no secret, okay? 10, 10, and 3. 10% K, 10% D, and 3 for smooth. I don't mind sharing that. And then the, this top bar right here is momentum on the high time frame, and this is the trend on the high time frame. I use these for my trend continuation trade. These vertical lines that you see are based off of the stochastic signal. When I have both blue and red, below purple and they cross down there I get a blue vertical line when I have red and blue above black and they cross above black I get a a red vertical line I hope all that makes sense the other thing that we look at are higher time frames and guys we all know that we are in a 240 minute bid zone so if you're a long-term trader this probably isn't a horrible place to be buying calls 
And I want you to see how important these levels are. Look at this. Look at look at the move out of this offer zone up here. This pink offer zone up here. You could have been short there. First you had a long here, short here, and now you could have a long here. We'll see. This is for longer term, okay? So we'll see how it plays out. We can watch it throughout the week. Okay, I hope that helps. Any questions before I shut it down? All right, if not, I'm out. I'll see you guys in the morning. Tomorrow, make sure you're here. We're going to talk about the system, everything that we offer, and what you get. See you guys and gals. Oh, the spreadsheet not available to trial members. You have no, no idea how many years it took me to build that spreadsheet. It's not something I just give away. All right, guys, we'll talk.